thank you everyone for coming to uh, Innovation Takes Root. I'm really delighted that you are here. It would have been lovely to have a slightly smaller room, but uh, I'm glad that you're all here uh, with me. We've been rethinking the paper cup for long enough now that uh, we've developed a new product. And uh, while NatureWorks usually doesn't like to speak at sessions like this, we thought needed to make an exception uh, so that we were able to talk to you about the extrusion coating grade of NGO that will, will now be becoming available uh, as the regulatory uh, compliance um, uh, status is achieved uh, in, in the regions that where we are able to go. So uh, in this particular uh, talk, I've uh, divided the talk into two sections. And want to start with uh, the paper cups. NGO resins have been used in extrusion coatings for uh, paper cups for quite some time now. So the part that I want to talk about is really what's going on in the marketplace that I see as continuing to uh, provide growth opportunities in this area. Consumers wanting, demanding the kind of properties that come with using a PLA-based extrusion coating material. But then I want to talk about the, the manufacturing process because there's a need to have better products uh, these uh, manufacturing processes, whether extrusion coating or cup making, were uh, developed and uh, perfected for a completely different resin. And so uh, running PLA on these kinds of processes results in some manufacturing inefficiencies. And uh, therefore to take best advantage of the new opportunities presenting themselves for bio-based and compostable paper cups, uh, we felt there was a need to get uh, a new product out there that would address some of these efficiencies and improve the economics of the paper cups. So modern paper cup, over a century old. And uh, the reason for it to come into being was really to protect the public health. This continues to be one of the important reasons for having the single use uh, food service wear uh, products and cups is to make sure that everyone has a clean vessel when they're uh, you know, sterile uh, product to be able to uh, work with and protect their health. Another thing driving uh, the continued growth in uh, uh, single use food service wear and cups would be our busy lifestyles. We're eating more and more away from home. A lot of these uh, restaurant experiences are the more limited service variety, where there's a lot of value to the consumer that that cup holding the vessel is really lightweight, so you can carry it yourself from the uh, counter to the table or off to your car and to work. And this kind of, of desire, though, comes with some concerns, right? Even in the 70s and 60s, people were concerned about continued use uh, expanded use of the single-use items, the disposable items, if you will, and how that was affecting waste and litter. And uh, certainly that kind of concern isn't quieting down as time passes at all. This is a, a, a very dramatic uh, uh, event from a year ago where, where people went to the headquarters of one of their fa favorite uh, restaurants and said, hey, stop. We cannot keep going this way. Status quo isn't going to cut it anymore. We've got to have change in the way that our favorite beverages are delivered to us. NatureWorks is uh, generally in uh, favor of change. And uh, looking back to our history, trying to figure out, hey, couldn't these mainstream plastics be made from annually renewable resources? Why not? And as uh, all of you know, the polymer being uh, made today in Blair, Nebraska, all of that carbon was CO2. Over the uh, air in um, Nebraska and Iowa just summer of last year. Change is good. And uh, one of the things that uh, you, you wouldn't be all that surprised is one of the earlier applications would be the combination of this renewable base bio-based, compostable, extrusion coating material with 
bio-based compostable paperboard. Why not? I, I pulled out uh, the, the um, words from the press announcement 12 years ago. If you just were to update those uh, statistics just a hair, this is the same kind of verbiage that people might write now, bringing forward a, a brand new, better paper cup to the marketplace where consumers are saying, hey, got to do something different here. This is important. Yesterday, we talked a little bit about uh, Ellen MacArthur Foundation. And one of the things that, that uh, was not spoke about that really impressed me was that before uh, Dame MacArthur got involved in the circular economy, she was a professional sailor and racing to get around the world. Well, there's a connection there. Her passion in sailing and being the first to uh, break that barrier in uh, circumnavigating the world by about 30 hours drove her to need to be very, very attentive to, uh, to resources uh, because everything that she needed for this 10 and a half week journey had to be already on the boat or there was no way she was gonna break a record. So thinking about conservation of resources and what is needed to manage these uh, finite resources better was really important to her and, and motivating uh, a passion behind getting this uh, foundation for the circular economy going. So as we saw yesterday, plastic packaging is very linear. Well, you could say food service packaging to uh, bring forward again the paper cups as well. Very linear, uh, extracting materials from the earth, converting them to products, a short use, and then abandon all of that uh, resource. Just in case you were th a little bit skeptical, because hadn't you heard there was a lot more recycling going on in your community, I pulled the latest data available from the US EPA to see that, yeah, here in the US, it's kind of the same story. Uh, at most, 10% of the plastics are being recycled. We do better with a lot of paper products. A lot of that's being recycled, but sadly, no paper cups, really. Uh, yard trimming's doing real well, but you know, not so good with food waste at this point, getting it uh, composted. So again, thinking it, it doesn't have to be plastics alone, it could be food service where in total, gotta do something different. Make sure that there's a lot more uh, recycling of those uh, precious uh, raw materials. Not having so much go to, to leakage, whether it's uh, littering in the ocean or the, or the land, not so much landfilling. That's kind of a waste of materials. Let's do more composting. You see that this is the first time that composting shows up on the, on the diagram. And of course, more renewable resources. So paper cups, what's the problem? How come nobody's uh, able to get them recycled? It's really not a gap in technology that needs to be filled. At, at this point in time, it's just logistics. And because of the, on the industrial scale, those uh, cups that were made that were out of spec, you know, right at the beginning of starting up the line, or the trim scraps from the production processes, they get recycled all the time, no problem. Bail them up, send them to, uh, very often it's a sister paper mill. They know what to do with it, they can handle it. Right at this point in time, the consumer end, there just weren't that many paper cups. And so putting together the specifications for the bales, it got overlooked somehow. So there's a lot of work that has to be done. Uh, thankfully, industry group that uh, NatureWorks is glad to be part of, called Food Service Packaging Institute, is taking this on, trying to get all the dots connected so that it's much more possible for people to uh, put their paper cups into the recycling bin, and they actually get uh, to a mill and recycle. It's coming. We know that, that it will, because it's happening on the industrial level. But food service in general, there's an awful lot of it that really isn't getting recycled. And when you think about it, why could that be? A big contributor is most likely that there's quite a lot of food associated with it. And so if those uh, cups or plates or what have you are relatively clean, Somebody's really going to want them in their recycling stream, but if they're really soiled with food, yeah, maybe. This is a much better way to go with composting. And one of the things we've been seeing a lot in the last few years 
is a number of different venues, whether it's a stadium, arena, a cafeteria, an event like the Olympics, when they want to it, get their zero waste goals achieved, switching to compostable food service packaging. And that allows them to get over that small amount of material diverted from landfill or, or whatever and into the really high percentages of uh, materials that are headed towards that uh, ultimate goal of zero waste. Because those things were so uh, effectful the, in those case studies, you can see that, that as folks are looking at in the new plastics economy as an example of, you know, some of these materials are going to be really hard to recycle. What should we do? How should we redesign them? They're calling out in particular the things that have a lot of uh, food residues associated with them. Nutrient contaminated is the description here, including, you'll notice, I call out in particular, takeaway food packaging. Hey, the redesign would be make it compostable, build up the infrastructure for more uh, compostable uh, materials. So in this environment uh, where there's a lot more demand and interest to have the kind of cups that would be bio-based and, and compostable paper cups, one of the things that, that some people might think is going to delay that uh, rate of change is likely that it just costs too much compared to the alternative. How are people going to want to go forward with that? Well, what they may fail to appreciate is that when you run PLA on manufacturing equipment that was designed and perfected for 50 years to run low-density polyethylene, there's going to be some inefficiencies that result. And as a result, that's going to impact the manufacturing cost structure. We would estimate that it probably elevates the manufacturing expenses by 10%. So this drives us to start thinking, well, what, what are we going to do about this? How do we get a better product developed? And taking a look, you know, my, uh, by background, I'm a polymer scientist, start, and I worked in polyethylene research for 18 years. You start right there with the molecular uh, architecture being completely different for PLA and low-density polyethylene. And in particular, in this manufacturing process, Low-density polyethylene has high melt strength and low viscosity. And sadly, by, uh, in contrast, for this kind of manufacturing process, PLA has both low melt strength and high viscosity. It's not a good fit for the equipment. So what happens that draws these uh, inefficiencies? Well, one thing is the line speeds end up being reduced. Less product is being produced every month. The fixed costs are, are distributed over fewer products. There's increased scrap rates. There's having to spend more uh, money on raw materials, the plastic, and even on the material that is purchased and end up as scrap. These cause the uh, inefficiencies that elevate the manufacturing costs. So when we think about this and what do we have to do to have a better product, three things come to mind for the extrusion coating manufacturing process. One, we have to improve the melt strength. That was a given. That was one of the, the big differences between low density and PLA. But we also have to have a much more stable melt curtain. So in addition to melt strength, we're now trying to fold in something called much better draw ability. The ability to draw down that melt curtain fast to very thin coating weights uh, and maintain stability. The other thing that we need to do is have much better adhesion. We need molecules that penetrate into that paper uh, board much more readily, lock into place so that we have better adhesion. Uh, viscosity is a big part of that. On the cup making side, uh, some similar, some new things pop up. On the heat seal side, a hot cup, which is one of the big applications for, the, for this product, would be uh, to, that your, the inside coating has to uh, heat seal uh, to the outside that's uncoated. So it's very much the same thing. Need a lot more penetration of that coating material into the paperboard to be, have a good quality cup. And then toughness. These cups on a, a high volume um, line are made at 300 per minute. 
the pounding that happens on this coating in order to, to make the base of the cup requires much more toughness than meat PLA has all on its own. So as our polymer designers start uh, thinking about, okay, so what are we gonna do differently? What are we going to need on the molecular level to make this thing work? The melt strength part is the easy part. It's easy to get high melt strength, but then how do you also get the low viscosity at the same time? And so that forces us to think about, okay, what are the individual pieces, aspects that we have to optimize? Well, one of them is we have to pick the right lactide polymer to get the best drawdown so that we're gonna end up with those light coatings that are pinhole free and a really stable web. That's drawdown, the best lactide copolymer to get that job done. We've gotta toughen really efficiently. It's not just to get the, the pinhole free cups formed, but we also have to have a high bio-based content to meet, meet all of the demands that are on this improved paper cup that we're looking for. And, of course, chain mobility. So in everything that we're doing, we're thinking, how do we have good chain mobility over a range of uh, shear rates, over a range of temperatures, so that we end up with good adhesion, good seal properties for making those cups. So the first thing I wanna do is show you rheological properties, how this comes about. And so one of the things that you're looking at on this curve is there's a whole bunch of materials being shown. So take a look at the yellow graph, the yellow curve, low density polyethylene, that's the frame of reference. That's the direction of goodness in uh, each of these slides. We're looking for lower viscosity. So when we look at the range of PLAs that are uh, readily available for use, we see they're all uh, pretty high in viscosity. And so our new grade, the NGO 1102, is lower in viscosity than those other materials have been. But remember, we need balance. So we don't, in, the, in addition to get the low viscosity, we need high melt strength. In rheological terms, we measure that as low tan delta. So again, look for that yellow line. There's the reference that, that we're, tr we're uh, looking for. This is the direction of goodness. And you can see that all of the meat PLAs, even the ones that were ha much higher viscosity than the 1102, have much lower melt strength, much higher low, uh, tan deltas than the new NGO 1102. So this starting to show that yes, in our mo molecular design, things are going well. This is a graphic to try to talk to you about the stability, the melt stability that is needed. So it's generated on a pilot extrusion coating line where the output rate is fixed. And so as you run faster and faster, uh, the, the coating weight gets lighter and lighter. And because you've fixed the, the distance, the, the coating width gets narrower and narrower because of additional neck end. Until you get too, you've drawn down too far and now the process is up step. And so you see that when we get to those very lightest coating weights, the bubble is like five times the size as it was up on the heavy coating weights. That's because the, the melt uh, curtain is, is now varying five times as much as it had been before. This is what instability means. And once you hit the instable regime, uh, this is not where you can operate on a manufacturing process. So on this next slide, slightly different perspective, now we wanna know about coating weight, but I've left out those bad points, the inoperable ways, places where the web was too instable to operate. And so now you can see that across all this region where we were getting good web stability, we're getting nice uniform coating weights. The third thing that has to happen in a, a good, uh, efficient manufacturing process is that we have to be able to obtain good penetration into that paperboard so that we get good adhesion. This is assessed by peeling the coating off of the paperboard. If the, the penetration was good enough, when you peel it off, there's fiber all over the back of that, that uh, film. If there wasn't, and then you get a, a rating of five, but if there wasn't any fiber on there at all, you get a rating of one. So you can see in between, there's uh, varying degrees of fiber. When the coating weights are heavy, meat PLA does just fine, getting good enough adhesion. But as you run faster and faster, uh, now it's losing adhesion. But look at that NGO 1102, still having good adhesion. And you may notice that, that box that I've drawn. This is the extended processing window now available. 
where you can have a, a nice, wide, stable web still, run fast line speeds, light coating weight, good adhesion. In that regime, you're able to operate where you couldn't have run with the plain steel legs. So this, this is my last slide uh, for my friend with the hand signals. Uh, so we've talked about that early on in the presentation that there is a lot of uh, pent up demand, if you will, for something that's much better, that meets the, the, the kind of characteristics that a PLA coated uh, paper cup has been delivering. But we felt the need to develop an extrusion coating grade to minimize some of those uh, manufacturing issues uh, and improve the, the cost structure. And what we're seeing from the early feedback on customers' commercial lines is that indeed we're getting stable, more stable webs with good adhesion. We're seeing line speeds increase up to 50%, uh, a 20% reduction or even more in coating weight in some cases. And we're also seeing good positive benefits on the cup making side as well. Good toughness to be able to run 300 cups per minute. A good uh, penetrability into the back of that uh, hot cup paper to make the seal without having to jack the, the temperature up of that hot air all the way to maximum. And so this is the kind of process efficiency improvements that we see as as needed in the marketplace in order to take advantage of these new opportunities that we see coming and hopefully you see coming with this changing uh, environment, a changing desire for a more circular economy. So this is it, ready to go.